A scene of Shakespeare a day, day 10. The Two Gentlemen of Verona, Act 2, Scene 7. Enter Julia and Lucetta. Julia. Counsel, Lucetta, gentle girl, assist me. An errand in kind love I do conjure thee, who art the table wherein all my thoughts are visibly chartered and engraved, to lessen me and tell me some good mean, how with my honor I may undertake a journey to my loving Proteus. Lucetta. Alas, the way is wearisome and long. Julia. A true devoted pilgrim is not weary to measure kingdoms with his feeble steps. Much less shall she that hath love's wings to fly. And when the flight is made to one so dear, of such divine perfection as Sir Proteus. Lucetta. Better forbear, bear till Proteus makes her return. Julia. Oh, knowest thou not his looks are my soul's food? Pity the dearest that I have pined in by longing for that food so long a time. Didst thou but know the inly touch of love? Thou wouldst as soon go kindle fire with snow, as seek to quench the fire of love with words. Lucetta, I do not seek to quench your lover's hot fire, but qualify the fire's extreme rage, lest it should burn above the bounds of reason, Julia. The more thou damnest it up, the more it burns. The current that with gentle murmur glides, thou knowest being stopped impatiently dost rage. But when his fair course is not hindered, he makes sweet music with the enameled stones, giving a gentle kiss to every sedge. He overtaketh in his pilgrimage, and so by many winding nook he strays, with willing sport to the wild ocean. Then let me go, and hinder not my course. I'll be as patient as a gentle stream, and make a pastime of each weary step, till the last step have brought me to my love, and there I'll rest as after much turmoil a blessed soul doth doth in Elysium, Lucetta. But in what habit will you go along, Julia? Not like a woman, for I would prevent the loose encounters of lascivious men. Gentle Lucetta, fit me with such weeds as may be seemed some well-reputed page, Lucetta. Why then, your ladyship must cut your hair, Julia. No, girl. I'll knit it up in silken strings, with twenty-odd conceited true love knots. To be fantastic may become a youth, of greater time than I shall show to be. Lucetta. What fashion, madame, shall I make your breeches? Julia. That fits as well as, tell me, good my lord, what compass will you wear your farthingale? Why, Aaron, what fashion thou best likes, Lucetta? Lucetta, you must needs have them with a codpiece, madame. Julia, out, out, Lucetta, that will be ill-favored. Lucetta, a round hose, madame, now's not worth a pin, unless you have a codpiece to stick pins on, in, on. Julia, Lucetta, as thou lovest me, let me have what thou thinkest meet and is most mannerly. But tell me, wench, how will the world repute me for undertaking so unstead a journey? I fear me it will make me scandalized, Lucetta. If you think so, then stay at home, and go not, Julia. Nay, that I will not, Lucetta. Then never dream on infamy, but go, if Proteus like your journey when you come. No matter who's displeased when you are gone, I fear me he will scarce be pleased with all, Julia. That is the least, Lucetta, of my fears. A thousand oaths, an ocean of his tears, and instances of infinite of love warrant me welcome to my Proteus, Lucetta. All these are servants to deceitful men. 
Julia, base men that use them to so base effect. But truer stars did govern Proteus's birth. His words are bonds, his oaths are oracles, his love sincere, his thoughts immaculate, his tears pure messengers sent from his heart, his heart as far from fraud as heaven from earth. Lucetta, pray heaven he prove so when you come to him. Julia, now, as thou lovest me, do him not that wrong. To bear a hard opinion of his truth, only deserve my love by loving him, and presently go with me to my chamber, to take a note of what I stand in need of, to furnish me upon my longing journey. All that is mine, I leave at thy dispose, my goods, my lands, my reputation. Only in lieu thereof, dispatch me hence. Come, answer not, but to it presently. I am impatient of my tarriance. Exeunt.